And I would like to uh, um, uh, come back uh, to you, Mr. Secretary General, uh, and regarding this particular trade facilitation negotiation that uh, uh, are going on currently in WTO, uh, ask you what are, can you share with us some of the elements that uh, some of the measures that are being discussed and already implemented in the Asian, in the Asian region. Yes, please. Well, first of all, we wish that the, the discussion on the global level would move faster than what it has been moving. Uh, we certainly have learned a great deal during this um, slowing down of the global economy all of us are exporting economies. All East Asia economies are exporting economies. So it is very frustrating to wait until the Doha round or the global round reaches its final conclusion. That's why here within the landscape of East Asia <coughs> is another attempt called TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. And there are some of the ASEAN members going in that direction, not all. Within ASEAN ourselves, we have established uh, our own bilateral agreements with India, Australia, New Zealand coming together, China, Japan, Korea. So six agreements, five agreements for six countries, Australia, New Zealand coming in together. And only last August, uh, the Ministry of Trade of ASEAN have agreed that next month at the summit, they will launch their own, our own regional comprehensive partnership. In other words, bringing India, Australia, New Zealand, the two agreements there, plus the one with China, Japan, Korea, three together, and make it one whole regional comprehensive trade partnership. This is because we have learned that we must move on regionally in order to take advantage of the potential that we have here in the region. It is called ASEP, ASEAN Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Uh, it is going to be a rather ambitious uh, effort, but it is something that we think we need to to move, to move ahead. Within ASEAN, the issues of efficiency of transmitting information from one port to the next, from one country to the next. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the press conference for the World Export Development Forum. Um, I'm happy for all of you to be here. Uh, as you know, just by way of background, uh, this is the 14th uh, World Export Development Forum, uh, at which uh, we have the honor of, uh, you know, many uh, prominent people attending, inclusive of those sitting next to me, uh, left and right. Uh, on my right, we have uh, Kun Supachai the Secretary General of the UNCTAD, and on my left, the Director General of WTO, Mr. Pascal Ami, and uh, on my far left is uh, Francis, uh, uh, Patricia Francis, uh, who is the Executive Director of the World Export Development Forum. Uh, the mission is certainly, you know, South-South, uh, uh, how to promote South-South uh, trade, and uh, in the midst of, uh, as you know, um, economic situations that uh, are not so uh, good in some parts of the world. Uh, and I think there's lots of opportunities for countries like Indonesia and all the other 120 plus odds, uh, others uh, within the South-South uh, you know, domain to uh, explore uh, at a time like this. Uh, and I think uh, uh, people uh, have uh, recognized that uh, you know, Indonesia is one 
of, of the few, if not many, uh, places that uh, ought to be uh, considered uh, more not only for trading but uh, other parts of the economic uh, activities uh, inclusive of uh, you know investments and tourism and all that uh, that's just a, a background uh, and we'll just start I think with uh, questions from all of you yep silakan nama dan dari mana I'm Eko I'm from Bloomberg News my question goes to uh, Mr. Pascalami, uh, last month the WTO has cut uh, the forecast on global trade. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, how is your outlook on uh, Asia uh, trade? Thank you. Well, as you, as you just said correctly, uh, we had unfortunately uh, to downgrade quite substantially the forecasts we had uh, spring this year for uh, world trade growth uh, worldwide. Our spring forecast Philippines cost more than going from Surabaya to Yokohama because we don't have the infrastructure, we, we don't have the shipping line, we don't have the facility among us and between us. This morning the President was talking about maritime connectivity, about 17,000 uh, islands here and about the maritime part of ASEAN. We have to put tremendous effort and energy and resources to make sure that we can establish the maritime connectivity <coughs> among us and between us. Japan and China are certainly being helpful. Um, and then the issue of opening up uh, various sectors of trade. We have problem with service sector, just like anywhere else, I think. And, uh, but it's interesting to, tell, to, to know that 70% of FDI Coming into ASEAN in 2010, 2011, 80 billion plus US dollars. 70 percent of that has gone is going into the service sector, meaning logistics, meaning education, meaning improvement, meaning telecommunication, meaning education, meaning health. Uh, it reflects the fact that the middle class is growing. It reflects the, the fact that these economies need services. Uh, in order to facilitate their trade, and uh, we need to open up more for each other's investment. So we have the ASEAN framework on services, and we have commitments to open up one after another, and uh, we have to make sure that we have uh, clear, transparent, concrete rules and regulations, and that we can enforce uh, the opening up the liberalization of the service sector. Let These are the kind of things that we are working on in order to make sure that the landscape is uh, open, is transparent, is easy to move uh, goods and services across borders. Thank you. Uh, f thank you. And let me give the, the, the floor to uh, 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 Minister Robert Davis to, to, to react to some of the points uh, made there. And um, uh, immediately after giving the floor to uh, uh, Minister Robert Davis, uh, I would like to uh, open the floor to the audience. Uh, please uh, uh, feel free to uh, put up your questions or comments, contributions there.